Hey YouTube, I'm Joe McGlynn. Welcome back to my workshop. I'm building a customized Studebaker pickup truck inspired by the Rod and Custom Dream truck. And today I'm starting on building the hood hinges for my truck. There's a couple problems I had to overcome. The original firewall, long gone. The original hood hinges, long gone. All of the body proportions are different because of chopping and sectioning. So a couple of options. I could have bought some aftermarket hinges. That would have been just fine. Or uh, what I chose to do is design some hinges. I uh, designed these in SolidWorks. I had all the parts laser cut and stainless by SendCut Send. Those guys are my new best buddies. Laser cutting all of these parts was about the same cost as buying a nice pair of aftermarket ready to roll hinges, which I probably couldn't have done anyway because my firewall isn't flat. There's an included angle between the two pieces as you'll see through this video. So I'll give you a quick overview of how these go together. So first, on the inside of the firewall, I have this thick steel plate. All of these holes will be drilled and tapped, and this will be attached to a brace inside the cab and tack welded to the inside of the firewall. And all of the hood mechanism will bolt to this from the outside of the firewall. On the outside of the firewall, the base plates are these two pieces of stainless. The outer one, is slightly smaller and it has the Studebaker S cut into it. And this is the other one. These two will sandwich together. Each of the edges will be radiused over and I will have quarter 20 bolts around the perimeter to attach it to the firewall, to that plate we were just looking at. And then 5 16 18 bolts that will go through these two holes in the middle. And those are for this adjustment mechanism. So this slotted tab will hold those two 5 16 18 bolts and it will allow the mechanism to adjust up and down. The full mechanism is mocked up over here and this is called a six bar mechanism. And that's because there are six links. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this mechanism is called, believe it or not, a six bar mechanism. It's not for people who can't count. Six links and seven pivots is called a six bar mechanism. And I had seen these, I didn't know what they were called. I just always called them scissor mechanisms or scissor hinges. Technically, the name is a six bar link mechanism. And I could draw a picture of one, but the trick is to get the, the action so that as the hood swings up, it doesn't move backwards and crash into the cowl, and that it swings up enough that the hood opens a reasonable amount. So I thought there's gotta be a way to engineer this. And I bought a book and started reading about kinetics and kinematics and formulas for designing these kinds of things. And two or three chapters in, I decided I want to finish this book, but I bet I can trial and error this into submission a lot quicker than reading the book. So that's what I did. I moved each of the pivot points a little bit at a time until I got the kind of action that I wanted. And I tweaked it from there and made it better and got to a point where I was happy with it. And here we are. So I also want to introduce my son. So a lifelong dream for me has been to build a car with my son. So my son, Kolya, come on in here, is here. He's been, why don't you have a seat? He's been coming down on weekends. He lives up in St. Louis. We're about an hour away from St. Louis. And he comes down and helps me with things that are too hard to do by myself, require two people to maneuver around or four sets of eyeballs to make sure that they're straight. Um, it's been a whole lot of fun. That would be two sets of eyeballs, actually. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's going on? Anything you want to say? Ah, uh, not too much. I'm just ready to get to work. Right on. Let's hit it. Let's do it. So I've mocked up these two dog-eared brackets with a stack of washers to simulate the uh, space apart that they need to be. And what I'm working toward is to deal with the angle 
of the firewall. So the firewall comes to a peak in the middle. It's about 19 degrees uh, included angle across the two sides of the firewall. So if those two dog-eared brackets mount flat to the firewall, they're going to be towed out and then just there's no way for the hinges to work. So what I've done is I set this bevel protractor to nine and a half degrees and I put some layout fluid on the parts that are mocked up and I'm going to scribe from zero on the outboard side to whatever the, the depth is, get whatever that angle is across the back uh, edges of the part here uh, so that when I remove when I uh, grind that uh, that wedge of material off the back of these parts they should sit s parallel to the center line of the truck so there I've scribed it you can see zero on the right side tapering out to about 160 thousandths on the left then I scribed that wider line down the face of that to serve as a guide for uh, working at the belt sander to grind that and get the angle on these parts. So that'll be the next step. I'm set up at the belt grinder. I decided this was my best approach. I've got a fresh 80 grit belt on and I've set the platen to 80 and a half degrees, which is 90 degrees minus the nine and a half bevel that I'm looking for. So if I keep square on these bolt heads, as you can see that the belt is pretty much parallel to my scribe lines. And so I'll just go nice and slow, work my way up across. And as long as the flatten doesn't move and kind of get out of control, it should be a fairly straightforward operation. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some gloves and face shield and hearing protection and we'll get busy. So this is the result of um, that whole process. You can see that the assembly leans to one side, nine and a half degrees. I also did a little bit of grinding to fit the slotted tab in between so that it is um, uh, square with the sides of the dog-eared bracket. So this all looks pretty good to me. One thing to point out, you can see that while the laser cut parts, you know, have a nice, somewhat clean edge, there is a fair amount of texture on them from the laser cutting process. And also the steel just has a mill finish on it, which is a, a bit of texture. So one of the things that I need to do is a lot of hand work to clean all of that up so that these parts look nice when it's all done. The cleanup process took a lot of time and isn't riveting. <laughs> television watching or YouTube watching. Uh, but I'll just talk through the process. For me, the best approach was to first cross file and then draw file the edges of each part to remove the texture from the laser cutter. That keeps the edges nice and square to the faces. The next step was to use cartridge rolls, which are ab abrasive, uh, round abrasive pieces that you fit onto a die grinder. And I worked through 80, 120, 180, 220 grit all around the edges just to remove all of the file marks and the scratches from the previous grit. So that gets us to a part where the edges are fairly nice. The next step is to use my pneumatic chamfer tool to round over the edges. And I went around all of the parts uh, and did that. And then the next step 
after rounding over the edges is to use a three inch DA sander starting with 100 grit and working up through successively finer grits to get a nice finish on the parts. I'm not looking for a polished finish, but I do want them to have uh, an even sheen. With that done, I could uh, weld up the parts that needed to be welded. Uh, after welding, I had to, of course, uh, go back and uh, uh, continue the surface refinement on these. I welded them before doing that. Then I pressed in the bronze bushings and all the holes were reamed and I pressed in the bushings using Loctite 680 and finally I was able to assemble the parts with stainless pins uh, and C-clips and bronze bushings and bronze washers. How the heck do I locate everything so that it's in a reasonable place from side to side and, and don't have it all crooked or uh, out of position? So what I've done is I printed off a left and right template and this dark line is the shape of the thick steel block that has the tapped holes that goes inside of the firewall that the hinges will bolt to and then there are offset lines at an inch and two inches and I did that just so I could get a visual reference to the shape of the firewall edge here. Obviously, that's not enough to accurately position them. That was just the starting point. The other thing is these, as you can see, they have the location for the quarter 20 holes around the periphery and for the 5 16 18 holes for the sliding vertical adjustment. So the next thing I did was I set up a laser level and I adjusted it so I have a, it probably doesn't show well in the video, but there's a plumb line right in the middle of the split of the firewall and then there's a horizontal line on each side that's projected and I adjusted my patterns up and down until this bottom edge of the mounting block on the pattern is exactly parallel to the horizontal red laser line. So that gets them equally positioned up and down and then to get them symmetrically positioned on the firewall that was relatively easy. I measured from the peak on the firewall to this vertical edge of the bolt block and that's 22 inches from the center to this on both sides. It's, I checked it, it's exactly right. So the next step is to snap punch these holes and then I can drill them and I can bolt the steel block to the back of the firewall piece and that gives us what we need to be able to move on. Hey folks, all right, I've got my hood hinges all built. These are all assembled. They're stainless steel pivots, bronze bushings, bronze washers between them and bronze bushings around the pivots. This moves very smoothly. I've got a lot of angle here, so I can uh, go 90 degrees. In fact, it'll even go over 90, uh, over center and just sit there. Uh, my plan is that I'll take it up to about 75 or 80 degrees and then have a hood prop rod that will hold it at that point. So super happy with that. I have the steering, lower steering mount made. I have plates on the back of the firewall that I need to weld on that the hinges bolt to. A lot of progress here. Probably ready to weld in the firewall and uh, move on and start building the floors. Holy cow. It's been a long time coming, but I'm really happy with how this is coming together. I think it's going to look really, really good. I'll grab the camera and walk around and let you see some of the details on, on the hinges. So here's a close-up of the hinges. They're all put together here. You can see the stainless clevis pins. And around on the front, you can see the bronze washers in between. And then their sleeve bearings that that stainless pin rides on. This is a two-part piece, so I could have the Studebaker S cut out, and you can see how all the parts have been smoothed out and the corners rounded over, and they work very nicely. So I'm really happy with this. This was a super fun project, and I'm really thrilled with the results. There was a lot of what you might think of as sort of tedious handwork to get all the parts smoothed out. And I, I don't know, I've probably got a good, you know, two full days of, uh, 
of handwork, uh, you know, between filing and using the mini DA and cartridge rolls and one thing and another to get the parts smoothed out. But in truth, I actually kind of enjoy that. It's sort of meditative. I have some nice music on and uh, I just go with the process and everything else tunes out. So hope you enjoyed this. If you do, you know, click the subscribe button, click the like button, click the notify button, leave me comments and let me know what you like. Let me know what works for you. Let me know if you have questions. Anyway, I appreciate you hanging with me and uh, look forward to the next time. Thanks a bunch.